Rebels and welcome to the channel. Welcome back to Superhero Wednesday, the day of the week where we talk about anything weird and nerdy and quirky and mental and shenanigansy and quite often than not, that's just showing my Funko Pops. But welcome to an episode I've, I've had scheduled since the, before the film come out. It's been on my notes of video ideas. And I'm going to take a look and tell you my 10 favourite moments from Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm just going to go straight into it. So you're going to have spoiler heavy shit here because I really want to get into this list because fucking love it. The film was amazing. I just just shy of 10 viewings. So it's, it's, is it still lingering at the cinema now? I'm not sure. But oh my God, I just adore this film. I am so happy watching this movie. And I wanted to give you my 10 favorite moments. So spoiler heavy, if I haven't seen it, definitely don't watch, which I'm assuming if you haven't seen it by now, you're probably never going to see it because most of the world are going to see it and if you've not chose to see it now i'm assuming you don't give a fuck if you don't give about spider-man then shame on you well i mean subject to opinion you like what you like but shame on you we're ready for jules get that seat belt tuck it in that's right i am a uh, physical actor i do movement and shit and let's take a look at my 10 favorite moments from spider-man no way home and uh kicking us off we're gonna do uh what have we got here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten i don't know who to start off with um want to change my list two sex right i've rejigged a couple of things because oh, i loved all of this it's so hard right the first thing right a couple of these things you might think well how can you enjoy that so it's not something enjoyable but this film did so much for me. I, I've never cried this hard at a film. Every viewing, I will happily admit, every viewing I've been in absolute tears. Um, but one of the scenes that I absolutely adore is the final, towards the, the second to last final scene where the spell's been cast, they want to forget Peter Parker and whatnot. And he goes back to the coffee house where MJ's working. And he's there with a plan to try and get MJ to remember and to get Ned to remember and whatnot. And obviously the bits with Ned are harsh and being in... That was horrible, but and disgusting. You're like, oh, you just turn the year is bro. But it's the stuff with MJ that kills me. When he's, he, you can see in his eyes that he's realizing he's like, I, I shouldn't try and make these remember because look at what their life could be. You know, the few, the potential un, unforeseen future. If they didn't know me and, and know me as Spider Man, they, they they have everything to live for. But if they do, then that's it. I've got them in danger constantly. I have to worry about them. They might not you know, make it through whatever spider shenanigans are going down. And it's just really heartbreaking to see him, see them get excited, you know, because they're finally at uni and whatnot. They're getting off to college. Uh, and you can see him, he's got notes and he's got words written out to try and make her remember. Especially spinning off the back of MJ, of, of, of you know, saying that they love each other. He's like, tell me, tell me that you love me when, when you see me. And he's like, I'll make you remember and all this. And it's fucking heartbreaking. He puts the note away, he gets his coffee and he just leaves and you're like, why do you always do this? I've always said that there's been a rule where they just don't like to make Spider-Man happy. Now, fair enough, he might be happy in the sense of that they're, he's happy for them because they can go on and live the lives that they, they always wanted to before Spider-Man's shenanigans. But it's it's not happy for him because he's constantly... It's the, the best way to describe it is he, he is literally alone. And it's it's so hauntingly like beautiful. Like It's horrible, but the symbolism behind it all is nice and the gesture is nice, but he's alone. And it just breaks my heart, but because it made me feel so much, it's on the list. This one is, is a particular moment. It's a few different moments, but I've just literally written down Jamie Foxx. So Jamie Foxx was a fucking godsend in this. From It's mostly because of what he says and how he interacts with people. When he's talking about, nah, man, that's just a treat. Or, can I ask you a question? Is that your Legos? Or, I'm naked of the words. I hate the words. Just them moments, I friggin' adore and he... I fucking love Jamie Foxx and I love him as Electro and I hope somewhere down the line, I fuck knows how it would work now with how they ended the story, but I hope we see him again. That would be amazing. But yeah, it's not a particular moment. I'm putting him as a collective, but Jamie Foxx's moments instantly on the list. The Mirrorverse fight. Now, the Mirrorverse fight was... was Any time you enter the Mirrorverse, it's always beautiful. And until they did the film... And visually in a 3D aspect, I, I, as much as a fan as I call myself, I didn't realise how beautiful it would look seeing Spider-Man in the Mirrorverse. And it's just amazing. And we have this great, obviously it's not a to the death battle, it's a friendly just want to stop each other battle um, between Strange and P.E., well, Spider. Uh, and, and the way that it's all going around through the New York, you know, the trains, you know, like multiple trains coming over, Doctor Strange doing his thing. But it's... Um, 
it's when the the symmetry, the uh, ge geometry uh, comes into play, and Spider Man beats Doctor Strange in the mirror verse, and he says, "You want to call it than uh, magic? It, it, it's math." And it's like, "Oh my friggin' god!" The way he comes out, he web Strange up, and Strange is like, "No." All any time we get in the mirror verse, it's always beautiful. I can't wait to see more mirror verse shenanigans inside of multiverse of madness. But this scene had to be on the list. Another one, which isn't a. Well, it's a happy scene because happy's there, but it's a, it's a, it's one that oh my god! Even thinking about it now, I feel like ugh. it's where we see Peter Aunt May's uh, grave, and all of a sudden, happy steps in. Oh, no, everything! Oh, look at the, the goosebumps! Oh, everything we know that they've gone through together uh, as a little team. When in in the scene of um, Far From Home, when Happy's looking at Peter making a new costume on the Stark jet, and you can see there's like real love there and stuff. And it's just heartbreaking just for him to walk in and be like, I don't remember anything we've done together, but he remembers everything we've done. It's just so soul-destroying. But at the same time, I guess, with the MJ message, it's nice because Happy can now be in some sort of better place, whether he's going to have an impact in other Avengers shenanigans later on. I, I doubt it. Um, but you never know. We could still see him. John Favreau has a key, key uh, is a key component to get the MCU kicked off. But yeah, it's just another heartbreaking moment. And one of the moments that might have really made me cry the most, you know. It was soul-destroying, but, but because it moved me so much, I love that scene. Another soul-destroying... There's a lot of soul-destroying moments in here. And I, I am a very cryy person, especially with spider stuff. But it's the scene where, after Aunt May's just died, and um, Peter's in front of that big monitor in the pissing down rain cut up and stuff and J. Jonah Jameson sat there just giving Spider-Man all sorts of shit you know, he's a menace wherever he goes carnage and destruction and death blah 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 and it's like well he's trying to do the best he can to try and make everything right is Aunt May's just been lost he feels like he's all alone he's, he's got nothing left maybe to fight for and there's a big monitor of you giving him absolute shit I mean, I love Joe Jonah Jameson as a, as a character. I love the Daily Bugle. I, I, I love everything they would do with Jane, Jane, Jay Jonah Jameson. But it's just, again, such a gut-wrenching moment to feel like, I talk about kicking somebody when they're down. And it's just the symbolicness of it where it's just, you can just sort of, the outline of him with the big reflection of the screen, the rain coming down. Visually, it just looks amazing. Plus, I always love, for whatever reason, I always love a rainy superhero moment. Like, and like uh, Tom McGuire's uh, top of the thingy, Spider-Man 3, getting rained on the black suit. Amazing. But yeah, the, what do you, what should we call it? Spider-Man looking at J. Jonah Jameson for a big TV scene? Ah, uh, here's a happy one. Here comes Doc Ock. Again, something that we, well, obviously wasn't spoiled, but it was in the trailer. Doc Ock's there. You know, we first see the... Uh, the, the the arm come through the, 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 the road. But it's it's the moments beforehand where his sense, the speed, speed of sense goes off in it. It's like, and you see people running, like, why are you running? But then you see a couple of cars fly up and a bit of, you know, the, the road cracking up and that. And it's like, oh my God, here we go. Our current spider against a multiversal spider from a spider that we, we've had before. This is where it's all starting to feel real. Yeah, we've got the trailers and whatnot, but this is where it felt really real. And it's the fight, the fight sequence they have with each other. Again, I said to the, in my review, I said to Chris, it just looks like a comic book. You can see that in a panel, in different panels of a comic book, turn of the page. They're fighting here, Spider's up here. Now the next panel, Spider's down here, he's webbing him up. Now Doc Ock's got him in one of his arms or whatever. It's just fucking flawless and beautiful. And you're getting, you're like, you're, you're like, you're so ready now. The multiverse is kicking off here and they're coming, the villains are coming in. Here's Doc Ock and what? And obviously shortly after, Green Goblin comes in. Oh, but it's, it's just so amazing. Just hearing the doof. Doof. It, to me now, it's obviously not universally, it's not, but to me, that's just as iconic as the, the, the water and glass in Jurassic Park. Just a doof. <sighs> Another gut-wrenching, heartbreaking moment, it's the spider speeches. The the moment where we, again, not long after the this big screen bit with Jonah Jameson, we see Peter Bagg at the top of the school, Ned and MJ rock up, give him a hug. But it's the speeches, the, the 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 talks that each spider gives to uh to spider to ah uh, to, to spider man gives to spider man to like Andrew and Toby give to Tom Holland. Um, and I was like, don't say you know what I'm going through, and they're like, no, no, we we do, uh, we've had this, and so you can sort of see in in Peter's face, Tom Holland's face, sort of like, if they're me, they they will know how I'm feeling because they've had their own thing you've lost, and but it's. It's when, ugh, I'm gonna, I don't promise, I've said to myself, I'm going to cry this video. It's when Andrew Garfield says, I lost my Gwen, she was my MJ. And I'm like, 
why are you doing this to us? But it's it's such a beautiful moment because that you can feel the bond initially tighten. Toby, of course, talks about Ben Parker and wanting revenge on the person that killed him, or he fought killed him at the time. That person eventually ended up losing their life, but he didn't make him feel any better. It's it's the bond, the speech, them sharing their most vulnerable moments and the saddest moments of their lives and stuff. And it's just such a, a heartwarmingly, but at the same time, gut wrenching moment. <laughs> I'll say this one nice and simple because I will blubber in a sec. But Andrew Garf uh, Andrew Garfield, Andrew catches MJ and the look on it ugh, the look on his face. A spot as well there. Hopefully that breaks the tension because my eyes started what Andrew looks at her face and he's like and you're like, oh my god, but yeah, that, that scene is next. Fuck. All oh, right, to a happy moment. We get this happy moment made me cry. Oh my god, even thinking about the film we're talking about it's making my eyes water. Um even though this is a happy moment, uh, it, it's, it made me bore my eyes out, but it's Enter the Spiders. Now, what I mean by Enter the Spiders is obviously Ned and then Andrew Garfield, Turn Maguire. Andrew Garfield's one definitely hit a bit more harder. Um, I forgot watching this film. How how much of a great job, regardless of what you think of the films, but what a great job he did at playing Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. He did a fantastic job, didn't he? He was amazing, but you seen him at the end of the alley and you know that, that's not our normal Spidey in this world. Because he's got his weird twerks and the way he moves and his mannerisms and stuff. You know that's a different Spider and you know that's Andrew Garfield by the way he moves and the way he comes in and eventually... And then just being in a full packed cinema, every seat taken, and having a standing ovation and carpet and cheering like it was an FA Cup last minute winner uh, final. It was, it was beautiful. It's something that was sitting with us for a minute. I have a, I'm literally, we've gone through all the different, you know... Uh, Spider-Verse shenanigans. We, we've gone through all of this before, but to see it on the big screen was just fucking heartbreaking. But like, like a good heartbreaking, like, oh my God, I am... I remember being sat there watching it first and then Chris is sat next to us and there was a, there was a couple of girls there and they started like blub blubbing up. I just remember just going... <laughs> just being so happy. And like but Anybody else out who wasn't in the cinema probably would have looked at all of us and thought, what a bunch of freaks. I was just so happy. And they, they came, Tom McGuire, the worst kept secret because as much as they were saying, we're not in it, we're not in it, and stuff's been added out and there was memes and that. We, we all knew they were in it. No matter how much you said no, we knew. And to see it actually happen was just... <laughs> and finally, the greatest and the best part of the film for me is the very end, the final shot. Peter is all alone. He literally quite... Honestly, yeah, Spider-Man might have one or two connections, but Peter Parker... Is all alone. Let's remember this whole film is a, is somewhat about between Peter and Spider. Um, when he gets into his new flat, we see him sewn up a new costume, a a fucking beautiful costume. The way the moonlight's hitting the snow and the light's hitting the snow, and it's reflecting onto his costume, which we know now is a fact that he made this version of Peter and they made this suit in, in inspiration of Toby and um, Andrew's uh, costumes. And it just looks so fucking beautiful. It's like a ballet dancing, watching him go across the rooftops and swinging and moving around. It's so elegant and flawless and the speed of which is happening. It's, it's such a well shot scene and it's a choreograph to an absolute T. And then finally him swinging up and you, you see the Christmas tree and that. You're like, oh my God, you're around the same time as Hawkeye. Uh, it's Hawkeye anywhere. Uh, and you see him go down and, and he, he, his, his last thing you see is like his face. But the way he's moving around, it, it kind of feels like that animation could be the, in the Spider-Verse animation. At the same time, I was like, that just all looks amazing. But it was kind of, again, it was like a bittersweet. It was like, okay, well done, Peter. Everybody's saved. You've you've cleaned up your messes and your fuck-ups. Peter, uh, sorry, uh, MJ and Ned can go on and live their lives and be happy. You can be happy for all these people, but not yourself. Uh, but it was like, it, but at the same time, it was like a nice escape for him because he, he hears the radio as he goes, I can get back to doing what I can do best. And that's being Spider-Man, the friendly name of Spider-Man. And, you know, get out of the Peter Parker mess for a while and we'll get into the Spider-Man mess for a bit and we'll deal with that. And you could just sort of feel it all coming out and coming together and stuff. It was just... <sighs> I hope to God there's somewhere, there's a, there's a picture or a frame of that sequence somewhere I can buy or, or a statue of it. Because it's just, oh my God, it's fucking beautiful. <sighs> that's my number one scene from the film. We'll end, we'll end it quite soon. I won't ramble too much because I feel like we might, I might have rambled on a bit too much. I can't help it. This film's so good. I've got so much to talk about it. But that was my 10 favourite moments from Spider-Man No Way Home. Let me know what you think of my list and let me know what your favourite moments were or your favourite characters or, or whatnot, what your favourite sequences, whatever it is about the film. And visuals. 
Thanks for watching. I'm definitely, definitely going to try and get it in there again. If it's still at the cinema, I, I'm going to definitely try and get another watch it. But visuals, thanks for watching. You guys are literally the fucking best. We're always keep being you. And keep on a web slinging on. Somebody please say that to Spider-Man himself now.